We just recently bought this sailboat that had been sitting abandoned for 15 years and looked like complete crap. We want to fix her up and sail to Alaska and then through the Northwest Passage to Greenland. Welcome along. Two things before we start the video. First of all, these t-shirts, they are now available if you are interested in supporting the project. They are printed and shipped from either Europe or America, made out of organic uh, materials and there are um, t-shirts and hoodies available and also some nice alluring arctic stickers. All proceeds are definitely guaranteed to go towards the boat refit. Some of you have also been worried about the lack of epic cinematic footage and drone footage and so on. And to that I just have to say I'm sorry, but right now I just don't have the time to shoot like really cinematic footage and b-roll. Um, for the duration of this boat refit it's, it's going to be a lot of like te technical footage and a lot of uh, talking and a lot of me showing what we are doing and so on. So if you are into that stuff then that's great. If you are not then um, come back in a month or two and let's hope that we are sailing by then. Anyway that was it from me. Uh, let's roll the actual footage. Alright, the mast is down and we do have a problem, or actually we have several problems. And these are the kind of problems that you probably won't notice until you take your mast down. And a lot of older boats are gonna have these. So first of all, everything was literally covered in bird poop. And while that itself is not such a huge problem, well, I discovered that bird poop is kind of acidic and when I tried to take out the screws and disassemble the fittings I basically broke everything that I tried to take out so all the screws broke a lot of that is of course gonna be galvanic corrosion but I think the bird poop really kind of contributes to the problem the first serious problem is the rigging So what's going on with these wires is that uh, the eyes are mismatched with the pins. So they are the wrong size. The eyes are too big for the pins. This is what it is like. This pin is inside. This is the sizing and this is obviously not correct because you know it places like kind of like stress loading or point loading on the on the eye. So this needs to be fixed and the problem with that unfortunately is that um, this is the standard sizing what we have right now and the eyes are only available in certain sizes for a certain size wire and I think we need to have like some bushings or something else here to fix the problem when we eventually get the new rigging. The other kind of similar problem is here with the link plate for the furler. So these are the plates that connected the furler to the deck and this is the um, pin that had been used there and because the pin was too small or the holes were too big, whichever way you put it, um, the plate when you furl the sail or when you just sail in high winds, the plate can twist because there's so much play and then you can see how this one here is completely bent it's not straight at all and that's probably because it has been able to twist and this is not good so that's that another thing that's kind of completely screwed up is the wiring and this was a bit of a surprise to me because uh, the wiring looked okay before I started taking things apart a little bit. Wiring was kind of hidden 
behind the lights and uh, partially pulled inside the mast. But when I took the when I took these uh, lights off, I noticed that the wiring is cracked in several places. So I mean, this thing, this is just done for. There's no saving this, so the wiring needs to be changed. And at the mast of the wiring looked good as well until I took the mast off. Oh, that's when I discovered that the wiring inside is uh, also not so great. So this is definitely not good because if this comes in contact with the mast, then you're gonna have some blown fuses and things shorting out. This wire here is also completely screwed. And this one has just shaved against the halyards, I think. Most of the wiring in there, it runs inside conduit, so that's gonna be fine. I just need to run some new wires here. While I'm busy with the mast, Sohvi is once again doing the actual hard work sanding the rear daggerboard. This daggerboard is kind of a special feature of this boat. It's used in addition to the rudder and the centerboard to balance the boat while sailing. And once done with the daggerboard, Sohvi continues with the demolition derby inside the boat. This is the best part, I think, when you hear the... You hear the... Yeah, we are taking off the uh, glass fiber, fiberglass, which is here as well. It's in Finnish, it's glass fiber, that's why I mixed up with them, but... Yeah, because they had put like a uh, a layer of glass fi fi fiberglass here as well, and because it's the shower, we kind of want to know what is inside because it's kind of like a critical place. Uh, or there could be co some corrosion under here, so now we're just gonna take it off so we can see what is there and then figure out what are we gonna do with this space. Yeah, this is not really a good practice that they covered these areas that they thought are gonna be wet. They covered them with fiberglass and attempted to keep the moisture away from the aluminum. But uh, I don't know, then if the water does get between the fiberglass and the aluminum, there is no oxygen there and it's completely stagnant and then it will corrode. So this is like a really bad idea. It's rather better to just have unprotected aluminum and then if there if the shower water ends up in there then um, that's fine the aluminum can take it but if it's uh, covered with fiberglass then it can really create some problems several days later So his fourth day of sanding the what used to be the shower sump. Yeah, yeah, it feels kind of pointless, <laughs> but at least we know now what is inside here, which is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> which is good, of course, but this one is a little shitty because it had uh, fiberglass, but also some epoxy, so it's like really, yeah shitty to take away yeah we found some moisture under the ac between the fiberglass and aluminum but here there is no corrosion nothing so it was four days well spent and it's not done yet <laughs> and it's so. not done yet <laughs> so <laughs> yeah have fun with the rest of it Thank you. 
So Solhovin is working on the other parts of the boat, sanding and grinding, and it's kind of hard to film here because it's so noisy all the time and so dusty too. Oh, Solhovin making such a mess, but me on the other hand, you know, I'm just using my nice little tools and I'm working on the electrical system, just taking things apart right now basically. So this here is the 12 volt main um, panel area. I took out the main um, switch and there's a bunch, uh, <laughs> bunch of wiring here that I'm going to replace or at least make better. So here we have the current state of things. This was the 12 volt main switch and this was the main 12 volt um, switch area with the alternator regulator which doesn't really work right now. These wires are just for that. Pretty nice. So I'm taking most of this out and then over here the main panels uh, currently they look like this. These are actually not that bad, they could be even worse and I have just been tracing wires and once I figured out um, where each wire actually goes and what it does then I mark it and then I disconnect it from the main panel. So I still have this much wires to go to, to trace and make sure um, what they are, then I will disconnect them and just redo the whole electrical panel and also the main 12 volt system. This is like the old wiring uh, or at least most of it. These white wires are part of the old wiring system and you can see they try to make it quite nice, you know, they uh, it's like quite organized but now there's also, you know, there's new stuff and the old wiring you see it even has it's numbered all of these wires have numbers so if i had the old wiring diagram i could probably just look this up and see um, where they go and what they do but of course i don't have the diagram so i have to figure it out myself by the way this here is a good tip for anyone who needs to troubleshoot electrical systems it's maybe nice to have one on board anyway it's just a small 12 volt 5 amp battery costs like uh, 15 20 dollars and um, now that we don't have battery power if i want to test a device you know i just take the wires and i tap them straight on the on here and then I can see. So here for example I have a Febasto diesel heater that's mounted like back there and I have no idea if it's working and here these two are actually the positive wires. There's two positive wires going into the controller and uh, of course one of them is black and one of them is uh, red. I don't know why and then there is also a negative wire and this one is black and I'm just gonna tap them onto here. Now when I do this, I don't, I don't know if you can hear it, but the fan just turned on in the back. So it's working. I don't know if it's gonna heat anything, but at least the fan function is working. In the next video, we'll be cutting some big holes both outside and inside the bolt. Sorry for not being able to put these videos out a bit more often right now. We just want to get the boat in water as soon as possible. And I'm just pretty overwhelmed with boat work and juggling multiple boat projects at the same time. If you want to support the project, then check out the Patreon page and the merchandise store. The links are down below in the description. Thanks for watching in any case and see you all next time. Bye bye.